Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Against the Odds. So as you know, last week, no Against the Odds poll, and that's because this week we are doing a super special for science episode. And we are trying something we've never done before on Against the Odds. We are playing a pre-constructed deck, the Chandra Pyro Genius Kaladesh Planeswalker deck, straight out of the box in standard. So pretty much, we are seeing if a straight out of the box Planeswalker deck can compete with the standard format at large. So a quick reminder before we get to the deck, if you enjoy Against the Odds and you enjoy this For Science episode featuring Chandra Pyro Genius, it would be awesome of you if you could take a second, click that subscribe button down in the corner of your screen. It's a great way to support the channel and the site for free. So when it came to playing a Planeswalker deck right out of the box, there's two choices. You got Nissa Nature's Artisan and Chandra Pyro Genius. Well, Richard and I battled out these decks against each other, and it seemed like Chandra was the clear winner. Not that the Nissa deck can't win, but I think the Chandra deck is definitely the more competitive of the two. So I figured if I was going to try to run one of these decks in standard and see if it could hold up to a more powerful level of competition, Chandra was probably the way to go. So as I said, this is straight out of the box, so there's not much brewing to talk about this week. So this deck tech might be shorter than normal. Instead, we're just going to kind of talk about the deck itself and look at the deck that we're taking into battle this week for Against Odds. So Chandra Pyro Genius, the Planeswalker deck, is built around Chandra Pyro. Pyro Genius, the Planeswalker, a, a little expensive, six mana, comes in with five loyalty, you can plus two it to do two to each opponent, so uh, if we can keep the board clean somehow, it will be able to kind of shoot our opponent down little by little, negative three can deal four damage to a creature, and then negative ten, it's basically like a flame wave, I think. Six damage to target player in each creature they control. So the challenge of Chandra is kind of twofold. For one thing, there's only one Chandra in our 60 card deck. That's where Liberating Combustion comes in. And Liberating Combustion is actually not a horrible card. Five mana, six damage to a creature. So it kills just about anything. It dodges Spell Queller, for example. Kills any relevant threat in the format. And it tutors for Chandra either from our library or if we play it once and it dies from our graveyard. So even though we only have one Chandra, we can actually search it up more frequently. The biggest problem with Chandra is this deck is essentially an aggressive vehicle-y Boros deck. So playing a six mana Planeswalker that probably in the best case is going to kill a creature and deal maybe two damage isn't really where you want to be. Imagine red-white vehicles playing a six-mana Planeswalker. Just a little awkward. So as far as the rest of the cards in the deck, I wasn't sure how to break it down exactly, so I figured we would kind of go in order of best to worst. So there's a handful of cards that are actually reasonable. Uh, probably our best way to win a game is Flame Lash. We get four copies of Flame Lash, four damage to a creature or player, so I imagine that the way that we win most often, if we do win, is to get in some early damage with creatures and then have multiple flame lashes to just kind of burn our opponent out from eight life or something like that. So flame lash is one of our better cards. As a removal spell, uh, it depends on the matchup. Four mana to kill a Archangel Avacyn at instant speed isn't horrible, or a Kalidus at instant speed isn't horrible, but to kill a Smuggler's Copter or something, we're not really where you want to be. So hopefully we get in early creature damage, finish off with flame lash, Probably the best part of our deck is our two drops are actually reasonable. Veteran Motorist is a constructed staple, so to speak. It sees playing red-white vehicles, and both Gear Shift Ace and Speedway Fanatic are borderline constructed cards. They don't really show up, but they are right on the fringe. It's two ones for two with upside. They're not bad. So these cards I don't mind having in our deck. They're some of the better cards in our deck. And then we get a bunch of vehicles of various power level. Fleet Wheel Cruiser is a good one because it crews itself, gets in for five with Trample and Haste. Oval Tra Chase Dragster, I think, can maybe finish off some games. Kind of like a Ball Lightning, a 6-1 with Trample and Haste, only one to crew. So that's another way if we can get in some early damage, Oval Chase Dragster can hopefully finish things off. Renegade Freighter. 
is a 5 forward trample when it attacks, so pretty reasonable. And then we have a couple of worse vehicles. Sky Skiff, the problem with Sky Skiff, it is just so much strictly worse than the Looter Scooter, Smuggler's Copter. Uh, Smuggler's Copter, 2 mana, cruise for 1 with flying. Exactly the same as Sky Skiff. Except Sky Skiff is a 2-3 instead of a 3-3, and it doesn't loot, so when our opponent slams a Smuggler's Copter, and we slam a Sky Skiff, we're just losing that battle straight up. Bonnet Bizarre Barge is just weird. It's a lot to crew. Not all of our 2-drops can crew it. It does draw a card when it enters the battlefield, but it's expensive and slow for our aggressive deck. And then we have a few 3-drops that are also borderline constructed. I have seen people play Aerial Responder. Flying Vigilance Lifelink on a 2-3 three for 3 isn't bad. Brazen Scourge 3-3 three, three Haste. We've seen those stats be playable in the past. Renegade Firebrand is really dependent on Chandra. When we have a Chandra and it's a 4-2 first strike for 3, it's pretty good. Without a Chandra, a little bit below the curve. But then things really start to get a little bit janky. Trusty Companion seems good on his face as a 2-mana 3-2 with Vigilance, but not being able to attack alone is problematic. So if we play this on turn 2, we can't just start getting in damage, and we want to be the aggressive deck. Spire Side Infiltrator, cute, but not very good. 3-2 for 3 when we use it to crew a vehicle, essentially. It deals a damage to each opponent. Gives us a little more reach, but still a little below the curve when you consider how powerful 3-drops can be. And then, last but not least, or last and least, Wildfast Monitor, 3-2 three, for 3, can gain Menace. At the very bottom of the barrel, we have our answers to Smuggler's Copter, Snare Thopter, a 3-2 Flying Haste for 4 mana, so uh, it can trade, essentially, with a Smuggler's Copter for 4 mana. And then Skywirl Harrier, 5 mana in white makes me think Archangel Avacyn. Well, we get our own Archangel Avacyn, except it doesn't have Flash, it's lacking a point of power, it doesn't flip or make things indestructible, uh, but I guess it blocks Smuggler's Copter. And then at the very, very bottom of the barrel, we get Built to Last, a pump spell. I mean, it's okay, but you don't really see these cards, combat tricks, seeing play in Constructed, unless you have a good reason, like Electrostatic Pummeler. So I'm not very confident that this is going to pay off for us. Cathartic Reunion is just weird. It doesn't really fit the theme of the deck. I think it's here more for flavor than anything, because it has Chandra on it. And then Fateful Showdown might be the worst card in the entire deck. I like the card. We played it in Turbo Fog, but this is an aggressive deck. We want to be emptying our hand. So by the time we get to turn four, turn five where we're casting Fateful Showdown, I imagine it's like discard two cards, deal two damage for four mana. Just not good. You really want to have a lot of cards in hand, and our deck's not going to do that. Mana base pretty much looks like a really good limited mana base. A bunch of basics and four stone quarries. And that is Chandra Pyro Genius. No sideboard, which is a problem. That's one of the things I'm worried about is... The deck seems to be geared to beat the Nissa deck, or compete with the Nissa deck, but it doesn't really seem geared to compete in standard. We don't have good answers to Smuggler's Copter, we don't have Artifact Removal, we don't have a sideboard at all, so I imagine we're going to have a rough time, but I think our best bet for winning with this deck is to just get a good hand and curve out. When we can go, like, Veteran Motorist into a good vehicle, or vice versa, Sky Skift into Veteran Motorist, crew up Sky Skift, hit for three, into Fleet Wheel Cruiser, into Oval Chase Dragster, maybe back that up with a little damage from Chandra, kill something with Liberating Combustion, get our Chandra, Flame Lash, Flame Lash, I think we can win a game like that, but I, I don't have high hopes, because I feel like our answers are really lacking. And when you look at the colors and the mana cost in the creatures, apart from a handful of creatures that we mentioned, Veteran Motorist, um, Speedway Fanatic, Gear Shift Dazed, maybe Aerial Responder, we're just strictly worse than what most constructed decks are going to be playing in those slots. The best example is Sky Skiff vs. Smuggler's Copter, also Sky World Harrier vs. Avacyn. So it just makes me worry that we might have some issues, just because when we tap 5 mana for Sky World, it's almost always going to be worse than what our opponent's tapping 5 mana for, and it goes like that across the curve with a very few exceptions. So 
We're hoping to get some good draws, draw our two drops often, draw our better three drops often, and then just use our direct damage to finish off the game. So we'll see. It'll be interesting. Like I said, this is more for science than anything. I don't have high hopes that we're going to put up a great record, but hopefully we play this until we actually win a game, and we'll see how many games it takes. It could be two, could be 20. Uh, so we're going to keep going at it until we eventually get a win with Chandra Pyro Genius and get a feel for just how competitive it actually is. So... Anyway, uh, that's been our deck tag for Chandra Pyro Genius in our For Science Kaladesh Planeswalker deck edition of Against Odds. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy the gameplay videos, and I will talk to you soon.